Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is lecture number two. The name of the paper is Morphology and Syntax. Uh, the chapter's name is Morphology. And we'll discuss morphemes today. Uh, you know, we have already discussed this before uh, from you. But uh, today we'll discuss it from O'Grady's book. The, the meaning is almost the same. It is similar. The wording is a little different. So we will zip through it. We'll do it quickly. This lecture is specifically for the students of BS third semester, GDC Pabi, and also for the students of those colleges which are affiliated with Abdul Wali Khan University. The topic is, as I said, morphemes, and it is lecture number two from this book. Contemporary Linguistic Analysis and Introduction by William O'Grady and John Archibald. So these are other two editors. Um, if you remember, when we were doing morphemes from Yol, uh, a morpheme was defined as the minimal unit of meaning and grammatical function. Here, O'Grady almost says the same thing. And he tells us that morpheme carries information about meaning, which exactly is like your, that it is the minimal unit of meaning. And the second thing is that it has to perform some function. And that is al almost again the same thing as was there in your, that uh, it is the minimal unit of meaning. So it has information about meaning and grammatical function that sometimes some of him has to perform some function as well. Uh, the example given here is that of a builder in which uh, the word build uh, is one morpheme and it has uh, its meaning. It carries the information about meaning. The meaning is to construct. And ER <coughs> indicates that the entire word functions as a noun. That is the one who builds. So, therefore, ER is that uh, function which is, is performing the minimal unit of meaning or function. It also has uh, that meaning, but it also has to perform some function. The meaning of ER is that it is one who builds. The other example is houses, and uh, you know that the uh, that one morpheme is a house, uh, which has the information about meaning, which means dwelling place, the place where people live. Dwelling means this. And uh, S uh, with the meaning more than one. So you can see that it has information about meaning, information about that function. S performs the function of making it more than one. This idea uh, has already been learnt. But the important thing here is the difference between simple and complex words. I think you are not done this one, so we will concentrate on this area too. We often have words which consist of single morpheme. For example, if we take train, it is a single morpheme. It is a word as well as a morpheme. And it cannot be divided into smaller parts, we T, R, and A, I, N, this division, or T, or R, A, I, N, <laughs> this division, is not possible. And uh, um, it carries information about the word's meaning or function. So it has that meaning there. Meaning is present in it. So you can see that uh, this a word train consists of a single morpheme and such words which consist of single morpheme are called simple words. This, uh, this information is very important and uh, it was not there in your so you should remember this uh, and keep it in mind that uh, some words uh, which have uh, one morpheme, single morpheme are called simple words. Those which have more than one more than one means two or three or four or whatever. 
These are then referred to as complex words. So simple words have one morpheme. Complex words have more than one morpheme. And these table, this table gives you information about um, words which have one morpheme or more than one morpheme. These words, for example, and, couple, hunt, and act, they have a single morpheme. They have one morpheme in them, and they are words. Therefore, these are simple. Couples has couple one morpheme as another morpheme. So it has two morphemes. The same is the case with hunter, hunt and er. Same is the case with active, act and ive. And therefore, these are complex morphemes. The complex morphemes having three morphemes is hunters, activate, and the complex morpheme having more than three morphemes is reactivate, which has re as one morpheme, act as another. And IV is yet another, and eight is the final one. So you can see these are two having two, three, and more than them. These are called complex words. So this information, as I said, is important. That uh, simple words consist of uh, one morpheme, while complex words consist of more than one morpheme. And we have already defined words that they are smallest free form found in language. So free form uh, is not making distinction between the, we are not talking about morphemes here, but words. This is a word because it is free and free has got these characteristics, two characteristics along with S, it is a word, but we cannot call it a single morpheme. It is, uh, it has two morphemes, dinosaur and S, and therefore it is a complex word. So the difference between simple word and complex word. This was that short lecture. Thank you and good luck.